Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here in the Fuzzy Biker Garage and look what I got over my shoulder today. That is my Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. Just love that bike. I put about, uh, last two days I put over 900 miles on it. Yesterday I put about 640 miles on it. Went uh, halfway across Nebraska and back. That's how long Nebraska is. The day before that I wanted a hamburger in Des Moines. So uh, I did 275 miles to get a hamburger. Now Des Moines is not that far away, but I, I took the circuitous route to get there. I took a real long way. So it was a good hamburger. Uh, Angry Goldfish was the name of the place. Anyway, beautiful bike. Let me tell you, I'll tell you a little bit about it and then we'll gear up and take it for a ride. So it's got a 648cc parallel twin engine, air-cooled, oil-cooled, there's a big old oil cooler in the front. Single overhead cam, four valves per cylinder, it's fuel injected of course, has a beautiful six-speed transmission. Bike puts out about 47 horsepower, about 39 foot-pounds of torque, that's about 52 newton meters, has plenty of power. I've uh, taken this thing all the way across Nebraska and into Colorado, we did a bunch of those uh, Passes Monarch Pass and Independence Pass and Fremont Pass and it did all, all the way up to 12,000 feet. No trouble at all. My buddy was on his shotgun 650. So it's got plenty of power. It's chain drive. It's got the uh, this 43 millimeter upside down fork on the front with about, uh, I think it's 4.4 .4 inches of travel on the front. Maybe it's 4.7. About 109 to 120 millimeters of travel on the front. 320 millimeter uh, disc on the front with a dual piston vibrary caliper. It's dirty because I'd went on a long ride yesterday. <laughs> it's got uh, a 19 inch wheel on the front, tubeless tire. I love that setup. You can feel the difference. On the back, it's got a dual shock system and uh, an 18 inch, I think it's an 18 inch, no, 16 inch tire on the back. And it's got a 300 millimeter disc back there with also a dual piston, kind of hard to see, isn't it? dual piston and bribery caliper. Now I went ahead and put these YSS shocks on there. That was money well spent. And that has really made a difference in the ride. I knew I was gonna be doing a lot of long rides, so I wanted something like that. Absolutely great ad. I think the rear travel is three and a half to four inches. So 89 to 100 millimeters in travel, something like that. Beautiful, beautiful. Seat height on this hot rod is 29.1 inches at 740 millimeters. That's with the stock seat. Now, I think that's the lowest seat height on any of the uh, current new Royal Enfields out there. Now, having said that, even though it is the lowest seat height, there are bikes that feel lower. The 350s, the 350 Classic, for instance, or the uh, Super Meter, or the regular Meter, the 350 Meter, have a lower feeling seat height. This bike has a 59-inch wheelbase, which is one of the reasons I liked it. That's about 1,500 millimeters. It also has a four-gallon gas tank, about 15.7 liters and it weighs 531 pounds or about 241 kilograms. Let's put that list away, by gully. Uh, some of the ads I placed on this bike, well, I put this windscreen on the front. That makes a lot of difference, especially, I, I've got a, about almost 11,000 miles on this bike. I got it, uh, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. And uh, I just love riding it. And this windscreen, it's a Royal Enfield product. It's been a great add to it. It's got LED lighting. It's got this comfort seat, Royal Enfield comfort seat. And uh, I added that. I had, uh, <laughs> I went on a trip a couple, about a month ago to Colorado and I did it the day before I went on that ride. So I put that seat on, rode it about 40, 50 miles that night. And the next day I took it on a, you know, <laughs> 1500 mile ride to Colorado and back. So, <laughs> and fortunately it was very comfortable. I'm very happy with that seat. You know, I was on that yesterday for all day long, over 12 hours and, uh, it's a great seat. I've got these uh, GV bags on the back, and uh, I don't know what these are called, GV weightless 900s. You put a key in there, they pop right off. So I'll take these, I'll run them into the house, I'll pack them, stick them back on the bike, they go on and off very easy. When I get to the hotel or the wherever I'm going, do the, do the same thing, you know, it works great. I put this uh, Hepco Becker rack on the back, kind of see it back there. And that's where I put, this is my all my camping gear right here. And that, that was a great ad also. And I, you know, I thought about getting one with this, uh, you know, the bar back here, but uh, I think that was the right thing to get. I like it. And then of course my camping gear, that's uh, not a motorcycle part, is it? So I've got a sleeping bag, a tent, an air mattress, air pump, everything in that little bag right there. I got that bag at Baxter Cycle and it says Royal Enfield right there. 
How about that? Look at that rear end. Isn't that neat? Uh, the tire. <laughs> I got a light here so I can show you this. So I've got something like a 1,000, I mean 10,900 and some miles on that tire. And uh, it's not on the indicators yet. It's getting close. I'm not sure how much longer I can go on it. I've got a new tire coming, so we'll find out what happens there. But that is a stock Seat tire with just about 11,000 miles on it. I'm very proud of that. Seat has really come a long ways, you know. They, uh, my first Seat bike was, uh, well, that one right there, that uh, Himalayan. And I wore the uh, rear tire out in about 4,400 miles. I literally wore it to pieces, and then I got a, a staple in it. But uh, anyway, so Seats have come a long way. Let's see what else have I added to this. Oh, these foot pegs. I love these foot pegs. I've also got them on my uh, Classic 350. They're extra wide. They give you uh, more places to put your feet on the long rides, and I do take this on long rides. You know what? I think it's time for me to gear up and for us to go for a ride. Wow. So the last couple mornings I've woken up. Now this morning I didn't have this problem. <laughs> but the last two mornings I woke up with just a strong urge to ride. I get that sometimes. It's where I feel like I haven't been riding enough or, you know, the summer's fleeting, you know, the time is slipping by. And I had this bike all ready to go. I'd ridden it the day before. And I hopped on it and I just headed west. I decided I was just going to go west miles and miles and miles. And I did that. And the thing just performed like a dream. It did not skip a beat. It just did everything like it was supposed to. Just a fabulous, fabulous machine. We're gonna stop because there is a policeman back there. And that's what I like about this bike. You know, here I am, I got, uh, it says 10,890 miles on it. And it runs like brand new. I've done the maintenance. I've done good maintenance on it, of course. We've kept everything just right. The back tire is just about wore out. So we gotta work on that a little bit. Uh, anyway, the ride, very smooth ride. I rode this thing all those miles yesterday. 640 miles yesterday alone and never once did I think what a rough ride or anything like that as a matter of fact I thought what a great ride I've got those YSS shocks on the back I've got the 59 inch wheelbase the bike is heavy it weighs uh, 540 530 pounds something like that now those are all reasons it makes it not as sporty handling but for a long ride like that it's awesome you know so what 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 is the disadvantage with a uh, like an interceptor is lighter and has uh, a shorter wheelbase and all that neat stuff and is a lot of fun to ride well this one has a longer wheelbase and a little more weight and uh, it's just a, a lot more comfortable sitting position for long rides the interceptor you're a little more over the front wheel you know you've got more control of the bike this bike you're sitting back you've got that neat big cup of a seat and the bars reach to me my feet are forward you know forward controls and I'm able to sit like this just hours and hours on that. Well, 12, over 12 hours yesterday and just had a ball on it. The best part, one of the best parts about yesterday, is I got back to uh, Marnie, the, mini, the mighty mini tropics of Marnie, and I had a Wahoo Burger by golly. Get yourself over there, derailed grill, try one of those hot rods. Now anyway, the, the bike is uh, great for that. So then, you know, what about this kind of riding? Well, it does this very well also. You know, it does this great. It's uh, it's not a sport bike, but it is a cruiser. It does this kind of thing, you know, phenomenally well. It uh, handles very good. You know, it's not a sport handling bike, but it uh, handles this kind of thing very good. You know, here I've got this, uh, I guess I got 11,000 mile perspective, don't I? But look at this, you know, pulls like a dream. The clutch has got excellent feel. It's the, the bike, the engine is, the fueling on this bike is excellent. It, it just, they've done something different with this compared to an interceptor, for instance. Interceptor fueling is good for what an interceptor is. This fueling is good for what this bike is. You know, I just, I love how they've done everything on this, you know. Uh, look, look at this, nice, easy handling, nice steep hill here, no trouble at all. Just kind of, whatever you want to do, it does it just right, you know. Turn a circle, not a big deal at all. Clutch works great. <laughs> 59 inch wheelbase, I think I said. That is 1500 millimeters. I, I like this thing, I really do. I just, I fall in love with it again. Every time I ride one of my motorcycles on a long journey, of course I fall in love with it again, but uh, it, it's a real beauty. Not, not saying I fell out of love with it, I've always liked it. It's just uh, really nice to take a nice, beautiful ride and you know, I, I got home and what do I want to do? I'm planning trips now. I'm thinking, well, maybe I should take this up into the mountains again. You know, I've got a Himalayan trip coming up in uh, the end of August. <laughs> but well, maybe I should take this instead. Well, eh, no, I think I'm going to stick with the Himalayan because of where I want to go. 
this is a you know this will not be a good off-road bike I've had it on dirt and gravel a little bit of gravel I guess not not much dirt but uh, only because I got stuck there and I wanted to take the shortest route to, you know between spots but, uh, but but look at that you know it's got this beautiful oculus you know the uh, analog speedometer on the top the little LCD in the middle it's not so little it's got the fuel gauge and the uh, always visible always visible gear indicator always visible clock the odometer you can over here you've got a button to control uh, trip one trip two or the odometer look how smooth that works the fueling is excellent and I said while we're up here there's there's also the trip meter but I never use that this nav system I've used it two or three times just to make sure it works. It takes a lot of energy off your phone. I do have this here. This is my tire pressure monitoring system. I love that. I think uh, every bike should have something like that. I like to. I ride every day, and I like to make sure that whatever I'm riding has good, safe tire pressure. Jumping over here to the levers, you know, it's got these beautiful curved levers. I've talked about those at great length before. I think they're very comfortable. And they work very well with these Amal style grips. Hey, look at this. What is that, a Can-Am? Yes, it is. Very nice, very nice. I think that's a Spider. We added the comfort seat, and that was a big plus. The other seat was not bad. I, I never felt the other seat was bad, but when I, you know, it, it was wearing out. I tend to wear seats out. I'm a pretty stout guy. You know, I've got a lot of pounds. And that has been a very good add, I think. That has been a, a big plus to the whole thing. It's a little wider. It's a little less relief by your legs, where your legs, you know, come off the seat to the forward. Also added these uh, foot pegs, which I think are a, a big plus. Just a great bike. It really is. I can't say enough good about it. Everybody wants to always compare it to other bikes. Uh, the shotgun, the two I'll compare it to are the shotgun and the interceptor. Both of those bikes are far sportier. Uh, both of those bikes are great bikes. There's nothing wrong with those bikes. Uh, the reason I bought this over an Interceptor, let's compare it to the Interceptor, because I really love the Interceptor. I really do. The reason I bought this over the Interceptor was the long ride. I knew I would be doing a lot of interstate miles on this, so that's what I bought it for, a lot of long miles like yesterday. And uh, I knew that uh, this would give me a little more stability with the longer wheelbase and the extra weight. So I, uh, I went for this model, and I've uh, never regretted that decision. It's, it was the right thing to do. What about the shotgun? Well, the shotgun's a lot like an interceptor. You know, it's a lot like an interceptor. It, uh, it's heavier than an interceptor, but you know, they can remedy that. They can put different exhaust on it. They can take the rack off the back. The rack alone weighs, I don't know, 20 pounds, something like that. 13 pounds, I think is what it was actually. And uh, they had one that they put forward controls on. I do like forward controls. Nothing against mid controls, they're fine too, but uh, I think when they did that, it took a lot of the weight off the rear of the bike. You know, they put slash cut pipes on it that ended about about where your buttocks is, you know. And they took a lot of weight off the back of the bike. And uh, the shotgun, you sit up higher and a little farther forward. I think your weight is over the uh, front tire a little more. It also has an 18-inch tire versus a 19. So I think that's a more sporty bike where this is a more of a uh, long ride bike, which is what I got it for. Uh, the other thing is this has a slightly larger gas tank. I think this has a about a half a gallon more fuel. That may not seem like a big deal. Well, when you're out in the middle of Nebraska, it is. <laughs> I have been in Nebraska before where I know there's a gas station in the next town or the next town, and I get there and the gas stations are closed. So a little extra fuel goes a long way. No, it's a great bike. It's a great bike. I, I just love this thing. I really am so happy with it. it almost 11,000 miles. I'm really impressed with the back tire. You know, see how tires have come a long ways. You know, I'm amazed that the tire has gone that far. I didn't think it would make it that long, but it, it really has just been a great thing. Would I put another seat out on it? You're darn right I would. So as far as handling, uh, it's a little heavy to push in and out of the garage compared to my classic, but compared to other bikes, it's very light. As uh, you get it in the parking lot, it handles fine. It's a little rakey, which means it's a little unstable at very low speeds, but not too bad. You get going, you know, 10 miles an hour, and it, it's a bit like this. Well, where are we going? We're going 30 miles an hour right now. It, it's perfect. It handles like a dream. Very good. It's not sport bike handling, but it's very good handling. Two-lane blacktops, I love it on the two-lane blacktops. You know, if you're not sport riding, if you're, if you're just out having fun, it's great. Can you do the curbies and the twisties on it? Yes, you can. You can. It's a little more work, but you can do it. You have to push the bike around a little more. It takes a little more arm effort, 
but it'll do it just fine. And then as far as the interstate goes, I love it on the interstate. It's the perfect bike for the interstate because it is so comfortable. So something about yesterday's ride, I crossed Nebraska, I drove 300 miles into Nebraska, well from my home, so about uh, 80 miles of Iowa and 220 miles of Nebraska, something like that. And uh, they've got a lot of long, beautiful roads out there. The sand hills are just a gorgeous area. And the bike just ate that kind of stuff up. You know, mile after mile of scenery and mile after mile of uh, beautiful road. It was two-lane blacktop road. It, it's, you know, it's not the world's smoothest road, but it's not bad either. And this bike just handled it very well. You know, it's got the suspension for it. It's got the wheelbase for it. It is a gorgeous machine for that kind of thing. Conclusion is... It's a little heavy, but it works very well. It's got loads of power, plenty of power. It does the job great. It looks fine. I love it. Oh, by the way, it's got Showa forks on the front. Those are Showa forks, upside down forks. Would I buy it again? In a heartbeat. I love this bike. I don't think I would trade it off. Of course, I get addicted to all the bikes I own, don't I? My Himalayan is the same way. <laughs> hey, watch for that Himalayan trip. We got one in, the, I think I said it already, the end of uh, August coming up. We're going to take that hot rod up to Colorado. So, If you all are interested in a bike like this, a new or used Royal Enfield, Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, accessories, thingamajigs, doodads, gloves, jackets. I've got my, uh, I think it's called an Explorer 3, Royal Enfield Explorer 3 jacket on. I've had that on for two days now. Just love the thing. Three days actually, counting today. If you need anything at all like that, get yourself over to Baxter Cycle in the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Or go to BaxterCycle.com, tell those fine folks that Fuzzy Biker, that's me, sent you. Now it's a beautiful day. Look at that. Look at that. Just gorgeous out. I am going to, I'm already on a beautiful motorcycle. I think I'm going to go for a ride. Y'all do the same if you can. Life is good. Wahoo! Yippee-yay-yay. Yippee-yay-yo. Down the road we go. Beautiful, beautiful machine.